I hope you're ready, because it's time for some tea. Oh, I hate tea. There is something stirring in the Irish blogging community, and it's coming for your favourite blog stars very, very soon. I asked some of the pages involved, did they want to give a quote or an interview, and I got no reply. I know some of the people who've been called out. It's Ireland. Everybody knows everybody by like two degrees of separation. I am behind bloggers unveiled. No, I'm not. Transparency. I wish my Instagram had as many followers as some of the influencers and pages, but unfortunately this is the state of my Instagram and my last wall post was weeks ago. I'm gonna work on that, she said for the millionth time. I have no aesthetic and I barely know what that is. Okay, so here's the broad strokes. In January of this year, a page was set up called Bloggers Unveiled, in which it did side-by-sides and called out influencers. Oh, don't you hate that word? I hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> feels gross in my mouth. It was calling out really blatant Photoshop and then it kind of grew into other stuff. It basically had posts that looked like this. In September 2017, a similar page on Twitter was started called The Secret TV3 Producer, in which apparently a member of the TV3 production team started calling out things that were happening behind the scenes anonymously. To my mind, Bloggers Unveiled was kind of an homage to Gossip Girl because it did XOXO on a lot of its posts, but apparently they said no, it's not so. Mm. Anyway, the page started picking up mad steam and a couple of similar pages followed and got set up. There was Blogger Watch Ireland, Fit Families, and I followed them all. When I first heard about them, I liked the idea. I mean, I really liked the idea. I loved the goss and I mean, and let's take down those picture perfect but basically, I agreed with the original premise of the page, which was highlighting a lot of problems in the blogging industry. Things like fake followers, and yes, a mahoosive amount of people, especially on Instagram, have fake followers. I mean, you just have to look at some of the Irish Instagram stars, for example. You have 500,000 followers, and I've never heard of you. A quick Google shows nothing about you. I'm not saying I know who everybody and everything is in Irish celebra who land. And yes, I call it celebra who land, because my favourite part of the weekend is going through Irish celebrity magazines and trying to figure out who the hell they are. But you only have to look a little bit closer at the accounts to figure out maybe the people who follow, like, and comment aren't necessarily straight up. A lot of the comments are really ambiguous, almost like they've just been generically typed into an app. And a lot of the followers come from different countries. Why would an Irish Instagram star have a ton of fans in Brazil? Wait a second, the majority of my viewers come from overseas. Just move on. I also love another thing that some of the pages are doing, which is calling out dangerous driving, especially the hypocrisy of the ones who are doing the Road Safety Authority campaign. I mean, Guys, you had one job. Drive not dangerously. You're being paid a lot of money to do it. Just drive not dangerously. But they drive dangerously and these pages are calling them out on it. I also think highlighting the white labeling culture is pretty cool too. I mean, you buy something from China for a euro, stick your name on it and then charge people $50. I also love that it's called out people who don't make it clear when they're being paid for something like a sponsorship. It's even made the Advertising Standards Authority of Ireland clamp down on stuff like this. Where's the hashtag SB? There it is. And I like that it's pointing out to seemingly naive, apparently very young people that what they see on the internet isn't necessarily real. Although, I gotta say, I think most school-aged people are pretty clued in that what you see on the internet is pretty much the best of a person. Back in the day, magazines were blamed in the same way, and sure, when I was younger, I'd see pictures of people, and I'd know they weren't necessarily real representations, and I'd go home with my zitty skin and my camel eyelashes, but it did make me feel bad. Yes, we all compare ourselves to those picture-perfect images. So what I'm saying about the pages is, those things equal good. However... Honestly, my spidey senses began to tingle pretty much from first click. You see, a page that is calling for transparency is not transparent. It's anonymous. Do we see a problem with this? We're being told a page's motivation, but there's a hypocrisy in its own construct. The pages have always argued that it's not about them, 
but surely revealing who you are is a crucial part of transparency. Knowing who is behind the pages adds context. We don't know if the person behind the pages is a failed blogger out for revenge. And I gotta point out, a lot of the posts are about the same people over and over and over again. You know they're probably coming for you after this video like you've put a target on your back? Well, maybe they'll watch the video and consider that I have valid points? Yeah, you're f***ed. Yeah, I'm f they also seemingly blindly ignore a lot of other big fish, like all the time, they'd never call out certain people. And I should point out that a lot of the people they call out I think are complete dopes. They're dopes, but that's their business. And it is a business. People are sent things to endorse in exchange for those items for free or for a fee. And what you choose to endorse is of course a personal thing. I was recently asked to endorse a celebrity trainer in exchange for that celebrity trainer for free. Let's call the celebrity trainer ZGs. I took one look at them and said no, because they're fugly and gross looking. Now, if they'd offered to pay me a good fee for that, I'd be looking for things that I like about them. Uh, they smell nice and have soles on them. You can also wear them on your feet. And look, I get why they want to stay anonymous. I can't operate my YouTube page with the carefree abandon of a huge American YouTuber or a British YouTuber because the chances are the person I'm calling out is a person I'm gonna have to work with in the future or my third cousin. Publicly naming and shaming in this country is not an easy thing to do. It's going to have an impact on your personal life and there's not a lot of precedent set for it. Because places like America and Canada and the UK are so big, it's pretty easy to see how this would translate over to your country easily. There has been a microcosm of this in other countries but not to the same extent as we've had it in Ireland. These pages are making national news right now. Well I've never even heard of them. Shut up Saoirse and go back to your rock. And I have to wonder, does the person or people behind these pages really truly believe they're not going to be or haven't already been tracked down? A woman has filed a police report this week after being accused of being behind one of the pages. She was sent mass cards in her door that said rest in peace and stuff like that. There's even a 50,000 euro bounty to anybody who can track down the identity of who's behind one of these pages. Having studied human behaviour both at university level and as a human, I'd have to say my scientific conclusion is that people suck at keeping secrets, like they're <laughs> very scientific. Okay, sorry, most people, I'm sure you're great at keeping secrets. Funny how everybody thinks they're great at keeping secrets. Let me tell you one. I don't have any. Both the page creators and whatever loved ones they've trusted with this secret are eventually gonna mite us the out of it. If you don't know about Midas Secret, it's basically when this hairdresser had the king's secret and he went out into a field and he dug a big old hole and he told the hole all the secrets and then he buried it over and then all the trees grew out of the hole and then all the trees were like whispering the secrets. Midas' secret. Basically, you can't trust people. We all love the goss. Love the goss. So I have to conclude that the person behind the pages is either super young or super naive or has a super cool plan to become the anti celebra who villain of Ireland, which would actually be pretty cool. I mean, it's worked out for Piers Morgan very well. There's definitely a niche there. He's very successful. He makes a lot of money. Maybe you guys could do that. But yeah, we also think he's an arsehole, so you'd need to be prepared to live with that. As the pages have grown, they've kind of devolved, in my opinion, from their original mission statement. They've started calling out family members of public figures, people who aren't public figures at all, and at times their posts have even been shown to be inaccurate. It's all become a little bit grey. Do you have any examples, Diane? Okay, one blogger was called out for trying to sell on a swimsuit as new when she'd actually worn it. Turned out, according to her, she would bought two swimsuits and was trying to sell the one in a different size that she hadn't worn. I don't know if that's true, that's just what she said, but, you know, questionable. A journalist posted a photo which she openly said was a sponsored ad, she declared that, and she said it was for hairstyling and hair dye from a particular salon. One of the pages called her out and said that she clearly had hair extensions in, but she explained this as being down to a head tilt and good, well, styling, which was what the ad was for. And another Instagrammer was called out for doing bad Photoshop because after zooming in, you could see there was a bendy wall, so they were saying she'd probably liquefied her body, but it turned out in her own Instagram stories that she actually had a bendy wall. 
God help anybody who tries to investigate this house. But my point is no retractions were ever issued and actually in some cases the posts even remain up on these pages. The anonymous nature of the pages means that the rules are the same as for any anonymous internet troll. They can deep dive into any subject without any ramifications and in this way they're doing themselves a disservice. They're denied an ability to self-check. Each page has said over time it has its own parameters for what it's willing to publish and what it isn't. Some are saying they wouldn't publish about anybody cheating, others saying they wouldn't publish about somebody taking drugs. To which I've got to say, what the f parameters are they? To my mind, I'd trust somebody a lot less who's looking a loved one in the eye and stepping out than I would somebody who's doing lip fillers and keeping it private. A personal trainer who's taking drugs to speed up their metabolism is surely somebody I want to trust a lot less with what food to guide me on to eat than I would somebody who's not declaring they've got avocado toilet paper as one of their brands. Guys, this toilet paper is so nice on my arse. You should definitely check it out. Link in bio. These pages have begun to succeed in their original missions, which is cool. I do think the problems they're highlighting should be filtered out by the likes of Instagram and the Advertising Standards Authorities. You could credit the pages as having been responsible for a recent takedown of a blogger who posted a photo of themselves advertising a foundation, the photo was photoshopped to and ultimately it got taken down by the Advertising Standards Authority and by the company itself who issued an apology. A lot more of the public are reporting things they find misleading as well. There's been a huge increase in those. Instagram has even started to remove a tiny percentage of what are clearly fake followers, which is a start. But if you can buy fake followers and likes for something which primarily has that as its appeal, there's a huge problem with that platform. People are gonna do it. This is a generation of narcissism. We get our validation from likes, views, and comments. And I include myself in that broad generalization. When you guys thumbs up my videos, I feel good about myself. And when you thumbs down my videos, I feel sad. Though I will say when you spend over 10 hours a day looking at yourself and listening to yourself, you tend to just think, is she ever gonna stop talking? Shut up. Ultimately, I think that for all the good and all the bad that these pages do, this Irish phenomenon is going to be short-lived. Unless they de-anonymize. De-anonymize. Anon Anti-anonymize. Make it not- Unless they make it not anonymous. And then they could potentially be huge and do all the things that they've been trying to do, only better. However, there is always the possibility that they wouldn't handle being a public character well a publicly hated character, but that's a hurdle that's inevitable in my opinion. Another reason I think they need to evolve or they're gonna burn out is a really obvious one. These pages keep saying they're not making any money from it. Now, I know from personal experience you can only do something for so long devoting all your passion, your energy and your time to it without getting paid. You need to be able to support yourself from it, otherwise you will burn out. Did I mention I have a Patreon and the link is in the description? If you support this Irish tiny YouTube channel, go check it out. If they do come out or indeed are outed, there's potentially a huge financial gain from it if they have the presence of character to be able to back it up in person. In short, in its current guise, it's going to burn out. It simply cannot sustain itself as it is unless it evolves into something else. And for me, that's becoming de-anonymous, anonymized. I also think it's inevitable that these content cops will spread. They're coming for your country's superstars of social media. So I think we all need to watch our backs. But you know, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think of the idea of these pages? Have you seen something similar? Is there a way they could do it better? Or maybe you agree with me. And if you do go check out these pages, let them know Diane sent you because God knows I would still like an interview. Why? Because I love the goss. I also wanted those picture perfect pieces taken down. Pieces. Honestly, <clears throat> pictures of herself and her pants and her parents' gaff, and basically all her Instagram is her arse. It's like arse, arse, arse. But I always found the arse kind of humorful. But yeah, pages like that make me go, 